That really goes directly into the talk today. Because I don't know about you, but I love Earth Day. And I really believe that Earth Day should be every day. Thank you. <laughs> because we can't do all that needs to be done for our blessed Earth in one day. <laughs> now God can do a lot in one day, although it did take him six days to create the universe, but we'll give him some room, okay? I asked us to visualize this image. This is one of them of the earth from space. I was a youngster when I first saw this image, and it impacted me so deeply because from that time, I used to think the world was so big. But from this picture, and those pictures of the earth from space, it's so small. This beautiful blue bubble in the middle of the universe. And as we progress as spiritual beings, we acknowledge that it is our responsibility. And we need to own that responsibility to be the stewards of this beautiful place we call home. So today's title is Blessing the Earth. And what a blessing to wake up and have rain, which we have been wanting for quite a while to just Drench us, drench us, wash us, give us that renewal. And it is a blessing when we get our rain. We look at Scripture, and we look at Scripture for a context. So this is Genesis uh, chapter 2, verse 15. This comes out of that creation story. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden, to till it and keep it. So from this very old story about creation, and there's at least two creation stories in the Bible, but this one is something we can look at. Oh, it's back! <laughs> I love it! So just so you know, when the wind is just right, it hits the screen between that dove window and, and it does that incredible vibration thing. And all it means is that what was just said or sung or prayed is so true. So come on, just let it vibrate. So what this means is God gives us everything. This whole package, this beauty, this Garden of Eden, this earth, this planet place we call home, to till it and keep it. That means we can be good gardeners. That means it's our stewardship to take care of it. Something at times we're quite good at, and something at times we're really, really, really bad at. Right now, I think the bad at outweighs the good at, but be that as it may, each choice that we make, each 
each opportunity we have to say yes to being a good steward of our planet home is a blessing for the earth. Ah, oh, Chief Seattle, a wise man who offered his native wisdom up to our culture. And here he brings a very important point. The earth does not belong to us. We belong to the earth. Now think about it. If the earth belonged to us, it would be possessive. It's all mine. And what happens to the things we get attached to and possessed to? But if we belong to the earth, then we're in partnership. We're in communion with the earth. We're made up of everything that the earth is. We are a product of this place. And when we drop the body, it returns back to earth. We're earthlings. And in that earthling mode, we have the opportunity to use our great faculties. The gifts from our inheritance from God is all the power that is to create or destroy. And as we connect with what is our commitment, what is our role for blessing the earth, then we can be in harmony, in belonging, like that wonderful song, I belong, I believe, and what I say, what I sing, feeds the earth. Yes? Reverend Mary Cupferly, a great unity minister, wrote some wonderful books, and she has we must be willing to do for men anything we expect God to do for us. Or we can hardly expect the kingdom of God to manifest on earth. It's a partnership. Otherwise, why would we be here? We've been created to be the hands and feet of God. Look down at your hands. Those are the hands of God. Look at your feet. Those are the feet of God. This is ours to do. And what we can do in the world with all that power of God, the essence and truth and wisdom of God that's with us in each and every moment is what transforms our experience on earth. If we want heaven on earth, we've got to build heaven on earth. It doesn't happen just by going, oh, I want heaven on earth. That's more like getting a headache. We want to awaken our spirit. And we don't have to do it all. It starts small. It starts by contributing our bit. So I have a story to tell you. Yesterday was Earth Day, and I got here for the seven-day Adventist, and I got everything opened up for me. I went out to the labyrinth, and I began the walk. And I noticed that a large black butterfly landed in the path near the beginning of the, the labyrinth. And as I'm walking through the labyrinth, every time I got close to that, I could see the butterfly was still there. And they did the whole thing. It takes a while to go through the labyrinth. The butterfly was still there. And when I got to come out, it was, it was still about three feet away from me, and I had passed it many times, it got up and left as I left. 
if we open ourselves to be open, how nature is ready to partner with us in our journey. Now, you could say it's just a coincidence. I don't think it's a coincidence. Just like I don't think that when I'm sitting in the hot tub in the morning meditating and the hummingbird comes to the hummingbird feeder and sits at the hummingbird feeder the entire time I'm meditating, 20 minutes, that's a long time for a hummingbird to not flap a wing. There's something going on. And we need to open ourselves because what if we truly made a commitment to being the best stewards of this very paradise that we're in. And what we experience every day are what appears to be a miracle. And it's just life. It's just God. It's just nature showing up to be the best it can be in each and every experience. Doesn't that sound good? Blessing the earth. And if we're going to talk about blessing the earth, we must come to one of our sacred sisters, Lady Bird Johnson, who was such a champion for bringing about an awareness of how we can extend a commitment to making life more beautiful. Here she says, the environment is where we all meet, where we all have a mutual interest. It is the one thing all of us share. Isn't that beautiful? And it's so true. We're in this together. If, if you were to imagine that the entire planet Earth was transformed into a boat. Okay, a big boat. It would be ours to take care of the boat to be able to continue to navigate through the cosmos, yes? That means there's maintenance that needs to be done. That means there's conservation that needs to be done. That means making a commitment so the boat will float. So if you are ready to join me in making a deeper commitment to blessing the earth, I honor you on the journey with me. And what I'm finding is that as I make these choices, I feel better. I am stronger. Because I recognize, just that, like that wonderful song, that what I'm doing is allowing me to feed the earth rather than just take, 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 take. And that is blessing the earth. Thank you. So the personal exploration for this week is to consider your commitment to blessing the earth. Now, you can follow the three R's. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Reduce is, do I really have to buy that thing? Reduce the needs making wise choices about do I need to buy it in this package or can I buy it in bulk? Reducing how much carbon footprint we're doing, we can plan better so that we go to the bank, we go to Walmart, and we go to Costco on the same day because they're all in the same line. Reuse is, I've started to use reusable shopping bags, something I did religiously in Hawaii. 
I just didn't translate it to Texas. And it takes, there's a learning curve. You know, first it's getting the bags into the car, and then it's remembering to take the bags into the, it does no good if they're in the car and they're not with you when you're at the checkout stand. And then when you unload them, they have to go back into the car so that you have them. It's, it's, it's one of those things. But we can lose it, use it, and we can learn it and recycle. Learn what you can recycle and recycle those things. And certainly cutting back on how much plastic we create and use is a good thing to do. Conserve the energy in your home. If it's, if it's winter time, make it, keep it a little cooler. Wear a sweatshirt. It saves a lot of energy. In the summertime, take it off and have the temperature a little warmer. I'm not talking about 90 degrees in the house. I'm talking about just a couple of degrees makes a huge difference. Conserve water, every bit of water. And I know we are in, my lawn looks so anemic, it only gets watered once every two weeks. And it looks like, uh, I'm kind of half brown, half green, with a lot of weeds that like to grow. Seems weeds don't need water to grow. I haven't figured that one out, but maybe we should be planting weeds rather than grass. Who knew? Um, <clears throat> So conserving our energy does make a difference. Conser conserving our water use is how we operate, and water is precious. It's life. Give your car a break. Maybe if you can't take a whole day and not use your car, do it for a half day. So I'm just going to have a car-free day. I'm going to go for a walk instead. L limiting how much we have our carbon footprint. And act locally. We may not be able to change the entire world today, but we can make a difference right here right now, what we plant in the garden, what we choose to, how we choose to throw our things away, how we vote. Voting is very important. I don't care how you vote. I want everyone who can legally vote to vote. Follow your heart. Acting locally means we have an invested interest in what's happening in our own backyard, our own front yard, our own community, our own neighborhood, our own city. You can add to this list and you can discern in what is it in this that adds to what you're ready to commit to. Because sometimes it takes a commitment to actually get something done. Making a decision, I intend to do this, I decide to do this. Are you ready? Thank you.